Hello, welcome to Keeping Your Cool, Thermal Considerations for TI Analog Products. This is part one of a four-part series where we start with the basics. I'm Matt Romig from TI's Analog Packaging. This four-part series is based around four common thermal questions that we get from our customers um, working through supporting our components. And this first section is entitled The Basics, What Should I Know About Thermal Performance? First of all, why does thermal performance matter? Why do we care? Why are we looking at this? The primary reason is that the lifetime reliability of, of pretty much all semiconductor devices um, is affected by temperature, specifically that most fail modes, whether they're uh, mechanical fail modes, whether they're electrical um, circuit fail modes, are accelerated by extended time at temperature. This is just one illustration, and, and don't get scared from this. This is a component designed for 150C, um, but we did some extreme testing just to see if we take this up well beyond the operating conditions for an extended period of time, so 12,000 hours is about a year. You can see that as we go higher and higher with temperature, um, you can see that we get a larger and larger crack or a worse and worse fail. Device performance also can be affected by temperature, so the mechanics of the silicon itself um, can be affected and the temperature that is designed for and characterized for at the component supplier is, is designed to operate up to a certain level and so we need to make sure that, that we don't exceed that temperature during operation to ensure the device performance. So we're looking really at reliability and performance as, as the, the two biggest or most common reasons why we're looking at thermal performance. Um, you can refer to your specific device data sheet to understand the maximum operating conditions that a particular device is designed for. So looking at thermal, I'd like to just give a little bit of background and talk about the, the thermal world and what does this look like for those of us that spend a lot of time here, but also to put it into simple terms for those of you that need to make sure that thermal works but don't want to spend a lot of time and energy there. So we found that illustrations or, or comparisons to electrical um, circuit diagrams or electrical current flow operation is a very a reasonably accurate way and a very helpful way to look at it. So when we're looking at the thermal world, we're generally looking at the flow of heat from some source of heat to some ground point. Um, so the heat, or uh, oftentimes referred to as power, is generated by devices or components in the system. And the large body of thermal mass, which is usually air, um, which is around that system, is the eventual ground. In most cases, in almost all cases, um, it's a DC electrical system um, when we make that comparison. There are examples like pulses of power dissipation or transient effects that come up from time to time or in specific applications, but most of the discussions that we see, and for the sake of this, this presentation, the series, um, will refer to uh, steady state thermal operation, which is the equivalent of DC electrical circuits. And the main reason that I mention those and what I'll talk about here, and if there's anything that you take away from this presentation or this series, is that the die, the package, the PCB, and the surrounding environment are all important for thermal performance or for thermal characterization. Just like in an electrical circuit where every contributor to resistance or impedance from source to ground affects the resultant waveform, it's the same thing in the thermal world. Everything um, between the source and the ground contributes resistance and affects it. So let's briefly spend one slide on thermal theory. I promise I'll keep it quick. But just to kind of show the, the theory or the physics behind what we'll be talking about. So you see here, um, and you probably recognize, just the three basic heat transfer mechanisms, conduction, convection, and radiation. And these are the three ways in an electronic system where heat moves from source to ground. And I show those not to get into the math, but just to show you what factors influence the effectiveness of that heat transfer. So some of the factors that you'll notice um, down there are uh, the material conductivity or the thermal conductivity of the materials involved, the area, the cross-sectional area, the spreading area, the thickness, and a few others. Um, so you can keep that in mind that anytime in your component or in your system that those are affected, then the heat transfer will be affected. And this illustration just kind of shows what are the common heat transfer paths and, and essentially how the heat spreads and, and gets from the source on the chip out into the surrounding environment. And really the main thing to call out here is you see the red arrows referring to conduction through the solid areas, through the component and through the board. And then you see the blue and the green refer to the convection and radiation off of those surfaces out into the surrounding environment. So that's it for the thermal theory. 
So next we'll give a brief overview of thermal resistances. These are probably terms that you've seen used in, uh, used in the industry, provided in data sheets, etc. And what we're, um, what we're essentially looking at, and I'd like to help you understand, is how these thermal resistances, what they mean, and how they're useful for estimating the thermal path in the uh, thermal world that we talked about. So essentially we have a, a junction or a source that is generating some heat and then we're looking at a resistor network up through the top, so through the top of the package and out to the ambient, and then down through the bottom, so through the bottom of the package, spreading in the board, and then out to the surrounding ambient. So this is a very simple approximation of the thermal path, um, but it's helpful for thinking about the contributors as well as um, putting together some basic estimates. So just to briefly explain in the equivalent electrical circuit, so power in the thermal is the equivalent of current um, in the electrical circuit. So power is generated, power flows, etc. Delta temperature or measuring discrete temperature points in degree C or K would be the equivalent of voltage drop or uh, delta voltage. And thermal resistance, often called theta, um, in measured in degree C per watt would be the equivalent of electrical resistance in ohms. So Ohm's law here for electrical circuits, delta V equals IR. The equivalent of that in the thermal circuit would be delta T equals P theta. And you'll see a lot of theta terms that are essentially just derivations or, or reconstructions of that. So I've illustrated over here on the left just a little explanation of each of those resistance contributions. I'm not going to go through those in detail. You can pause your screen and read over those brief explanations, or if you want more information on those, you can look at the uh, apps note mentioned below. So on that note, I'd like to clear up a common misconception, and that is that the thermal data for a particular package is something that is a useful or a measurable term. In reality, it's a mythical creature, just like some of the other ones that you see here, Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster or the uh, Jackalope. Um, the closest living relative or the, the useful term when we're talking about thermal data, the closest to this would be thermal data for a particular device, which accounts for the, the dye in the package effects, under certain conditions, which then talks to the PCB and the system effects. Because the dye, the package, the PCB, and the system all matter to the usefulness and the accuracy of thermal data. So this is a question that, that we get a lot, the thermal data for a particular package or even for a particular component, and it's very important for that to be useful data that we talk to um, all the resistances in that thermal world or in that equivalent circuit. So to summarize from part one of our series here, the thermal performance of components is important to consider in order to ensure their quality and performance. So this means lifetime, quality, and reliability, and this means performance to operating specs. And the requirements for those are generally captured in the data sheet. Um, we looked briefly at some basic thermal theory, which shows that the die, the package, the PCB, and the system are all important parts of the thermal resistance and that there are different contributors to that, to the conduction, the convection, and the radiation. And we'll look at those some more in the, uh, in the next series, um, the next parts of the series. And then we also looked at resistor networks and common theta values and how those can help us to consider how the heat moves, um, what is the effect of thermal performance, how do the different factors contribute. But um, because those are approximations and because they all add up to the total resistance, they must be used in their proper context. Up next in our series will be part two, which is entitled The Temperature, and we'll look at some specifics of measuring the temperature of a device in a system and what contributes to that and how to do that. You can go to www.ti.com to find information on specific components or to search for apps notes or resources, and we have a number of those available. Or you can feel free to contact me directly at romig at ti.com. Thank you very much.